Oh boy. I'm about to do three movie plots from a death-defyingly terrifying franchise. We're doing in a Final Destination movie plot. I'm going to be doing Final Destination 1, 3, and 5. As those are the Final Destination films I have seen. I've never seen 2 and 4. So we're doing 1, 3, and 5. And we're going to start with 1. Oh, God. Okay. So... High school student Alex Browning boards Volley Airlines Flight 180, a Boeing 747, with his classmates for their senior trip to Paris from John F. Kennedy Airport. Before takeoff, Alex has a premonition that the plane will face a mechanical failure leading to a mid-air explosion killing everybody on board. When the events from his vision begin to occur in reality, he panics until a fight breaks out between him and his rival, O'Carter Horton, resulting in both of them being removed from the plane, along with Alex's best friend, Todd Wagner, Carter's girlfriend, Terry Shaney, teacher, Valerie Luton, and students, Billy Hitchcock and Clear Rivers. None of the other passengers except Clear er, believes Alex about his visions until the plane legit explodes after takeoff, sending a a massive shockwave towards the airport, shattering the windows. That's when everyone believes that Alex's premonition was actually real. Afterwards, the survivors are being interrogated by two FBI agents, Wayne and Sarek, who are both suspicious of Alex. 39 days later, after attending a memorial service for the victims of that explosion, an unusual chain reaction causes Todd to be accidentally hanged in his shower that night. While his death is ruled as suicide, Alex sneaks into the funeral home along with Clear to examine Todd's corpse. The home's mortician and William Bloodworth reveals that the survivors who escaped from the impending circumstance has disrupted a death's plan, who is now claiming the lives of those who were meant to die from that accident. Alex and Clear are discussing their next move when the rest of the survivors arrive outside the cafe, where Terry is soon run over and killed by a speeding bus. After watching a news report on the cause of the explosion, Alex concludes that death is reclaiming the survivors according to the sequence of the intending demise on the plane. Nonetheless, he is too late to save Miss Luton, whose house explodes after she is impaled by a falling kitchen knife. The remaining survivors reunite while driving through town as Alex explains the situation. Carter, who is next, is enraged over Terry's loss and stops his car on a train crossing, attempting to die on his own terms. While the others escape, he changes his mind at the last minute, but his seatbelt jams. Alex manages to save him just before the car is smashed by an oncoming train that knocks sharp now from the wreckage into the air, dissipating or decapitating Billy. Alex learns that because he intervened in Carter's death, it skipped to the next person in the sequence. The next day, while hiding out in a fortified cabin, Alex recalls having changed seats with two classmates in his premonition and and realizes that Clear is actually next. He rushes to her house to save her while being pursued by Wayne and Shrek. 
who believe Alex is responsible for the remaining survivors' deaths. Alex finds Claire trapped inside her car and surrounded by loose electric cables that ignite a gas leak around her. He grabs a cable, allowing her to escape from the car just before it explodes. Six months later, Alex, Claire, and Carter travel to Paris to celebrate their survival. While discussing their ordeal, Alex reveals that death never skipped him after he saved Clear. Fearing that their struggle is unfinished, Alex retreats when a bus hurls a parking sign towards a neon sign which descends towards him. Carter pushes Alex out of the way at the last second, but the sign swings back down towards Carter and kills him. Yeah, this, this is absolutely ridiculous as the first one. But I don't think it compares to the third one, which we are going to get into right now. Okay, in 2005, high school student Wendy E. Christensen visits an amusement park in Pennsylvania with her boyfriend, Jason Wise. Her best friend, Carrie Dreyer, Carrie's boyfriend, Kevin Fisker, and their classmates to celebrate their graduation. As they board the Devil's Flight roller coaster, Wendy experiences a premonition that a camcorder dropped by one of her friends during the ride will land on the ride's tracks and will be run over by the train's cars, causing the hydraulics to cure the restraints and train cars to fail during the ride, killing everyone on board. She convinces nine people, including Kevin and best friends Ashley Fruit and, and Ashley and, and Halperin, and alumnus Frank, Frankie Cheeks, athlete Louis Romero, and goth couple Ian McKinley and Aaron Elmer, not to ride that roller coaster, but fails to save Jason and Carrie, who are among the remaining passengers killed in the derailment. Weeks later, Kevin tells Wendy about the explosion of Flight 180 and the survivor's subsequent deaths. Believing they may be in a similar situation, at a tanning salon, Ashley and Ashlyn are burnt alive in malfunctioning tanning beds. Note, that was from a wooden board that fell down and trapped them both inside while all the heat it started to increase in both of them that eventually shot fire out of the light. It's causing them to get absolutely cooked. Now convinced that death is stalking them, Wendy and Kevin set out to save the remaining survivors using omens hidden in photographs of the survivors that Wendy took on the night of that crash. When Wendy and Kevin pull into a drive through restaurant and observe Frankie's photos, a runaway semi-trailer truck forces them to escape Kevin's truck before it collides. The collision causes the truck's engine to burst out of the hood and grill, killing Frankie, who was in the car in front of them as the fan sliced his skull. The next day, Wendy and Kevin failed to save Lewis, whose head is crushed by two weights from a weight machine at the school gym. They find Ian and Aaron working at the hardware store, where a chain reaction from a runaway forklift allows Wendy to save Ian from his death. However, death skips to Aaron, who falls on a nail gun that shoots repeatedly through her head, killing her. While identifying the last two survivors from the photographs, whose faces are obscured, Wendy realizes that, th that they are her sister, Julie, and one of her friends, prompting Wendy and Kevin to rush to the local Tricentional Fair to save them. Kevin saves Julie from being impaled by a haro, but an airborne flagpole oh, fatality impales Julie's friend, Per E. Masco oh, oh, now see. Moments later, after Wendy saves Kevin from an exploding propane canister, the trio is confronted by a grief-stricken Ian who blames Wendy for Aaron's death until an substantial cart of firework cannons launches into a cherry 
picker that falls and crushes him. Five months later, Win Wendy experiences more omens while riding on a subway train with her roommate Lara and her friend Sean. As Wendy is about to disembark, she suddenly reunites with Julie and Kevin, who had another, who had also boarded the train. Wendy receives another premonition that the train will crash, killing everyone on board. Panicked, the remaining survivors attempt to stop the train as it is about to crash. Yeah, Final Destination 3 is crazy. I mean, the only thing I really remember er, er, from that movie is the, is the tanning bed deaths. Th that was one of the most insane in deaths I've seen, but I've seen more in the fifth one. Okay, Sam Lawton is on his way to a company retreat with his colleagues while their bus crosses the North Bay Bridge. Sam has a premonition that high winds will cause the bridge under construction to collapse, killing everyone except his girlfriend, Molly Harper, whom he manages to get across the bridge safely. Panicked, he persuades Molly, his friends Nathan Sears and Peter or Fredkin, and Peter's girlfriend, Candace Hooper, his boss, Dennis Lappin, and co-workers, Olivia Castle and Isaac Palmer, to leave just as the bridge collapsed. But in the premonition... And, and a whole bunch of them take take a death. Olivia falls off the bridge into the into the to the water er, before being crushed by a by a falling car. Dent is being subdued by hot tar and a bunch of others. Later, after being interrogated by FBI agent Jim Block. The survivors attend a memorial service for the deceased co-workers while they are being watched by Coroner William Bloodworth. One one day at at a gym practice is Cand uh, is dies after a mishap on the bars when when another gymnast. Uh, is, is on the balance beam and ends up getting poked by a by a screw on the sharp end, knocking down a powder ball that got in Candace's eyes. Then she she lets go of the bars and takes a terrifying fall, snapping her spine and and I'm pretty sure breaking all the bones in her body. Hey, believe me, it's horrifying. The next day, Isaac's head is crushed by a fallen Buddha statue during an acupuncture session at a Chinese spa. Bloodworth, who has been present for both deaths, tells the remaining survivors that if they wish to cheat death, they must kill someone who was never meant to die on the bridge, and thereby claim their remaining lifespan. At the same time, Sam and Molly fail to save Olivia, uh, who is going through some laser eye surgery until oh, it started to get out of hand and her, her eye gets damaged, causing her to go a little bit nuts before falling out a window to her death, which ultimately caused her, her eye to come out. Sam learns that the survivor are dying in the order they were meant to die on the bridge and realizes that Nathan is next. Nathan, who has returned to the factory, accidentally kills his co-worker, er, Roy Carson, during an argument. He relies this information to the remaining survivors, who believe that Nathan must have claimed Roy's remaining lifespan. When Dennis arrives to question in the incident, a rent launched by a belt old sander splits his face, killing him. That evening, Sam and Molly reconcile their relationship at the restaurant where the former is working. 
Peter, who has become unstable after Candace's death, interrupts the date and decides to kill Molly to take her lifespan. After Peter draws a gun, Sam and Molly both escape to the kitchen as Block overhears the gunshots from outside and enters the restaurant, only to be shot dead by Peter. The former attempts to kill Molly and Sam to eliminate witnesses, but Sam kills Peter with a meat spit to save Molly. Two weeks later, Sam and Molly board a plane to Paris. Before taking their seats, they notice a fight between high school students Carter or Harrelton and Alex Browning in, in, as, a, as a slight flashback to the first Final Destination film. Both being removed from the plane with teacher Miss Luton and a handful of fellow students, revealing that the plane they are boarding is Flight 180. Upon takeoff, Sam overhears Alex's vision from a flight attendant's conversation with a passenger. He realizes that it is too late for him and Molly to escape, and both of them perch along with everyone else on the plane in the explosion that follows. At Roy's memorial, Nathan learns from a co-worker about Roy's autopsy and the discovery of his brain aneurysm that would have resulted in his death in a short time anyway. As the co-worker leaves the bar, the landing gear from the plane smashes through the roof and crushes Nathan. <sighs> yeah. I I watch a lot out of crazy films. Not many of them compare to Final Destination. If you're someone who can handle oh 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 blood, gore, or or death, then you should like this film. But other than that, I would stay away from this film. Um, if you if you get squeamish over stuff like this. But thank you for watching.